I've got Eric and Tom with me, and how are you guys doing? Good, right. good, thanks. Good so teams. this is we'll call this take two for those at home who don't know. It's an inside joke between us. <laughs> 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 All right, so I just found out you guys are actually from the Northeast, but you're going to be coming to Austin to open your one show for the year, Woven Glass. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, we've taken, um, we only do one show a year because it takes us that long to create the sculpture. And we, uh, we've been doing that for about six years now. And, uh, we chose Austin, uh, because we met Mindy Party, uh, when she first opened the gallery in Philadelphia. She came to, uh, our exhibit there and she met us and she uh, liked our work and she's carried us ever since. And we, in January, when we were getting ready to, talk about debuting the second in our kimono series we flew down to austin we met with mindy we saw the gallery we saw how great a space it was and how big it was our our work tends to require a lot of space and uh, so we hammered out a deal and we've been working on the art all year to debut and uh, on this coming saturday and what exactly are we going to be debuting for this show well, one of the biggest things that we're debuting is the winter twilight kimono and it's a life-size woven glass kimono. Um, it's the second in our um, kimono series, and um, it focuses on the winter season. And actually, our series is about um, going through the four seasons of the year, um, different times of day. And so what people will see is a life-size woven glass kimono um, that um, shows you a winter landscape um, at, during the twilight time of night. So um, we do um, very interesting things with our glass. We do a lot of powdering to give very interesting colors. Um, we use um, different elements to give reactions. Um, we add metallic looks. So it's kind of a real interesting um, thing, and, and we think it's, it'll be real exciting for people to see this um, this life-size kimono in glass. And instead of creating a kimono flat on the wall, which is the way most fabric kimonos are actually created, we wanted to go beyond our, you know, the impossible weave that we already do and actually make her three-dimensional. So she's standing with her arms outstretched about four and a half feet wide, and she she has the form of a woman. It looks like there's a woman standing inside the, uh, the, uh, the dress. So we really wanted it to come to life, and people can... Uh, really see details in the just in the body shape to make it look like it's really realistic. So for people like me who have no clue, you don't just get like Coke bottles or anything. There's a real process to creating the glass itself. Yeah, it took us about, uh, it took us a little over two years to actually develop the process of woven glass. Um, very unique for glass. Um, you can actually feel a texture on the glass um, when you touch it. Um, when you look at it closely, you can see it's all woven. Um, and so that took us a while to develop. And one thing that's um, very challenging in woven glass is um, because of its texture and because of its little crevices and, and things, it takes a long time and um, to cool it down. Because if you cool it down too fast, um, it'll crack. And so... Um, you know, we've had some times of failure in the beginning trying to develop this thing. We put a lot of time into it, and um, it's something that um, is quite unique. Yeah, it takes us um, about six weeks to make a like a single table sculpture, and we have to take all the glass, and we have to, even though the glass that we get, um, the sheet glass that we get that comes in a, a few colors, they're not enough colors for us. And then we, because we're doing so much mixing with them with glass powders and crushing glass, that we have to test it for compatibility because if they're not compatible, then they'll just crack when they're cooled. So we have to do all the tests on the colors, make sure they can touch each other. Some of our pieces have 80 different colors of glass hues that we've made in them. Of mm -hmm. course, the kimono probably has over, I don't know, 150 yeah. different kinds of glasses that we made that we can identify each one. And, uh, it, and we have thousands and thousands of colors of glass in our um, – our collection that we've developed over the years and recorded how we made them. So we have to do all that process to test, and then we can finally, you know, sort of stage the piece, and then we can weave it together and uh, and polish it. All right, hold that thought. So your head is. No. I figured out the light. <laughs> okay. Now, 
let's go back just to like a quick second. You said something about touching the kimono or what you actually let people touch your art piece? Yeah, we actually we like people to connect with our pieces and we feel like, you know, because this is such an interesting thing that we do. Uh, with the woven glass, um, we actually want people to touch it and feel the texture because um, it looks impossible. And um, for us, you know, taking a while to develop it, you know, it's kind of been impossible for us to figure out at times. So um, we do want people to have that experience, touch it, feel it, you know, feel the texture. Um, and we just think that in that way, you know, there's a closer connection to the art. And the, the basically, sometimes the fringe edges are fragile, but the the main structure of the of the sculpture is pretty strong, and so people can run their fingers over it. And, and I think when people see it, they they visually it looks impossible that that could be glass. So by touching it, you get that sensation right away that you know it's glass. And we think that's really important. And we we do work hard with our galleries to try to encourage them to at least if they have the works under glass, that they will allow someone to open the glass and, and touch it uh, so they can get a connection with it. We think that's really important. You guys are a nightmare for gallery directors, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> At times, I'm sure. How did yeah, you guys- that's oh, that's what I like about Mindy because, um, you know, she's been a very good um, gallery to work with. Um, we've worked with her for years now. All the sculptures are out on pedestals. They can be, you know, um, they can be touched. I, I, mm-hmm. I guess I shouldn't give you permission for that ahead of time, but, <laughs> but she, um, you know, it, it's certainly something you can, you know, ask the uh, the person about, and we've we've tried to tell them all that it's okay to let people touch it. It's something very worth the visit to Austin to see. Now, how did you guys get into woven glass? What was your art- artistic background before this? Well, we actually started with um, stained glass okay. in the early 90s. And um, from that, um, we developed an appreciation for you know glass and being able to cut the glass and all that. And um, we got into kiln work, which is um, you know using big glass ovens to heat the glass and melt it together and things like that, um, because we wanted to develop unique glass. Um, pieces for our stained glass panels. Okay. Well, as we began to work with the kiln, um, we developed um, an interest in more experimentation and just developing that woven glass and just doing it exclusively. And that's how we got into the woven well, glass. And as we worked with the glass, you know, sort of in molten states and we could see how it would move, we just mm-hmm. loved that. And we actually didn't go back to stained glass anymore. We made an abrupt uh, stop, and we actually had a client that we were build that was a collector of our stained glass. We were building a window for them or starting it, and we explained to them that we really wanted to put focus on this the new woven glass that we developed. And they said fine, and now they're one of our biggest collectors uh, of our woven glass too. So it had many of our original pieces. That's 